Hello and welcome everyone. 3.0 has just released for World of Kings and here are a few tips to get you started. The first thing that needs to be on your mind is to reach level 73 as soon as possible because once you reach level 73, that's going to be kind of the threshold that you need to meet to be able to complete your first overlord for the first day, which of course is the fastest way to increase your character's gear score. So the way that you get your level to 73 is uh, first go into the upper left hand corner and you'll see the main quest tab. You want to just do all of the main quests that you can. Uh, I think it took me about 20 minutes to get through the entirety of the new main quest line up until now, and that should get you to around level 72. After that, what you can do is go to your daily tab in the upper middle there, and you want to complete first your run Toto run, which gives you experience. Then if you need more than that, you want to go down to your path of erudition. You want to complete that as well. And after you've done that and you still need more experience, what you can do is you can actually go to your guild faction and then do your guild construction. So each time you claim and complete one of these, it gives you 21.1 thousand experience. You can either take them, wait 30 minutes and auto complete them or take them and actually complete them. And that's going to help you know, push you a little bit further. But if all else fails and you're still not level 73, what you can do, and you can actually do this first if you'd like, is go and with the stamina that you have, go to your old world dungeons and scroll all the way to the bottom, complete the Rebirth Monastery, Arnos Ruins, and Void Abyss, which will give you experience each time you defeat one of those bosses. Then once you reach level 72 and you're still not level 73, you can complete Soul Temple because the level requirement for this is level 72. And after you complete this, it'll give you experience as well. After you do all of those things, you should be level 73, which will enable you to complete the first Overlord dungeon, which have now been rebranded to Ares, Taurus, and Gemini, respectively. Um, I actually was able to complete Overlord 1 and 2. 2 is actually very difficult for today. It's going to be kind of hard, but... Anyways, you can at least do number one. It's not very difficult at all, and it is Redstone Castle. So at least get to level 73 and do your first Overlord. The next thing I'd like to explain are just kind of some of the, the mechanic changes within the game itself that I think will be helpful to orient you. Uh, so first, let's take a look at the Divine Wings. Those are probably the first thing that you guys noticed. There's a quest in the upper left-hand corner that says something about wings or, or wing quest just complete that it takes about five minutes to complete and once you complete it you're awarded with your first set of divine wings now in order to access the divine wings you want to click the four squares on the right hand side of your screen click on divine wings and these are this is basically the interface that that you can see where your divine wings are accessible so the way that it works is you're given the divine wings you're given these item, uh, this item called magic dust, which you can get from doing adventure modes or from consignment. And then you can use those to level up your wings. As you level them up, they of course increase in stats. And once they get to a certain level, you'll need other items to continue increasing the stats. And I believe the appearance of what they look like. And that's just kind of how, how the wings work. But uh, additionally with those wings, you can use these divine feathers that you'll get from different random dungeons and uh, just completing certain daily quests to give you these wings and you can input them. So if you go here for the C plug, I'll go ahead and let's say input the vitality plus 27 and you click socket. It goes in and gives you stats. And uh, same thing with the flame plug. I'll just go ahead and put in uh, wild mitigation and I'll explain what that means in a moment in there. But when you get to the light plug here, it takes, it also has one socket but there are two things on the bottom here of the screen. And if you just put the vitality in one and let's say I try to socket it, it's going to be, it's going to randomize. So watch at the bottom here, I click socket and it goes left to right, left to right. It failed because I only put one in and it didn't select the one. So when you get to the light plug and I'm assuming once you get to the earth plug, uh, when that unlocks later on down the road, you're going to have to, let's say if you want one specific feather to go in, you have to put two of the same one in to guarantee it. And that's just, kind of a that's just kind of their way of, of kind of halting your progression to make it more and more difficult to level up your wings but the wings are pretty awesome I mean if you go to appearance you can uh, select your divine wings now and look at these they have like these awesome mech wings <laughs> it just looks incredible I have no idea how to get those at this current point but this is something that you can look forward to and if you know you're kind of not really into the whole divine wings thing you can uh, you can either hide select to hide the wings here and if you you know want these other wings, you can get little fairy wings later on as well. But this is just kind of an additional cosmetic uh, with an additional stat. The next thing I want to explain are the changes to the mercenary system. So if you click on mercenary here, now you have a new tab called expedition. Throughout the day at different times, it says event time from 12 to 2300 daily. 
different bosses will become available and this is basically how it works you can click the boss click go to challenge or go challenge and you can in the same way that you can uh, dispatch your pets do certain pet activities you can dispatch your mercenaries so you have one team uh, that you can dispatch so let's say I hit the plus button and these are the remaining mercenaries that I have it's not going to be the most successful thing ever but I'll click one and just let's say one healer and then just a few DPS you can do up to 10 per and then you hit confirm and deploy and it brings you to a little cutscene and just shows you the fight so this one in specific is going to be for Lateris and uh, if you look in the bottom left hand corner you see damage so the goal of this is not to defeat the boss because when you first do your first uh, kind of deployment for the tutorial it shows you that you can do one character and you send in one character and it does no damage and I kind of felt like I was wasting my time so I backed out but the goal is not to defeat the boss the, the goal is to basically stay in here and do as much damage as possible and then when the time runs out I think it's after one minute it'll give you a certain score and then give you certain rewards for certain items so I'll go ahead and wait until that skips ahead Okay, my mercenaries just got destroyed, but it doesn't matter because the time uh, runs down regardless of whether or not you do enough damage to the boss. But there you go. So it says challenge ended and that's the max damage. That's the accumulation of all of the damage that I've done for all my mercenaries. So once that ends here, you're given a prize. And that's just, again, another thing that you can do uh, for your mercenaries. Now, the next thing I want to explain are going to be the changes to your sigils. So if you click on the four bars and go to skill and then go down to sigils uh, for the sigil pouch, uh, whenever you summon, as you can see here, it says level six uh, sigil merge chances times two. You click the little question mark above synthesize 10 and it says here the base uh, rate for converting into a level six sigil is 0 0.07. So now it's going to be multiplied by two. You can go to your sigil pouch, you know, dismantle any sigils you have that you don't want. Go to sigil and go to quick merge. I'll just do a quick, quick merge here. I doubt I'm going to get a level six. It's like a 0.1% chance. Yeah, okay, I didn't get one. But anyway, that's that's how that works. And then as you continually surge uh, or merge sigils together, the chance will go up until you eventually get one level six. I'm going to release a video uh, either later tonight or tomorrow. I actually got to get on Lego's account and merge 290,000 sigil shards together. Uh, you got a lot of level sixes, so that's something just to keep an eye out for on the channel if you're interested in checking that out. Uh, but that that's how the new sigil system works is you just get an increased chance to get the higher level sigils. Next up, let's go to the reforges. So if you click the four bars, go to artifact and go to reforge. Now there's a little luck charm next to the reforge button. And if you click on it, you can look. Blessings of Flona's luck is zero out of 20. So every time you reforge one of these, I'm not going to do it now, but every time you click reforge, this fills up and up and up. And once you do 20 reforges of the same artifact, the next one that you do after that will have a guaranteed bottom row of complete plus twos. So let's say I did this 20 times and I'm looking for, let's say, a plus two mana torrent, which I already have. Uh, once I do it 20 times and if I haven't gotten it within those 20 times, the next one I do will have like a plus two readiness, plus two firm stand and plus two of something else. It might be mana torrent, it might not be. But again, that's just another way to kind of give you a higher chance of uh, attaining those plus twos on the bottom tree. Now you notice something here, it says force release replace. They had a change to force release and careful aim. Careful aim is now a very, very good um, talent trait to pick for marksmen's in specific. For the Frost Whisper, it's still best to stay force release, but there are certain classes now that would opt into careful aim because of the change. And what they've done is they've made it so that if you go to your artifacts here, and you have force release but you want to make the change to careful aim all you have to do is click replace and it will swap it to careful aim for free i'm not going to do that again because i'm using force release but i think that's really nice of them to do uh, just so you don't have to reforge all your artifacts to get careful aim you can just change it for free the next thing i want to show you is a change to something called alter so if you click on your inventory you'll see that in the bottom right hand corner on that right tab they've made a new tab called alter so you click that and basically what this is, is you get these altar base items uh, from either supply, scale shop or guild shop. You can buy one from the guild shop per day and then you can buy them from, you know, the other outlets in the shop as well. You can upgrade it and upgrade your level. 
to unlock the certain artifact, uh, what's it called? You can upgrade these different altars. So right now all I have is flown is unlocked. And what you can do is you can select gear that's in your inventory. So I have a legendary item that I can basically sacrifice to the altar, even though you still get to keep it and you can take it out whenever you want. But if you have an altar open, you can put different items in there to get a diff to get different residual stats. And so I have here this uh, offhand that I'm not using so I can click embed and it will give me all of those stats, which is pretty significant, like 60 intellect, 181 vitality for Frost Whisper. That's very, very good. And of course, the stats go up as you get other items to put in. So if you are one of those people who has a lot of gold laying around, you can purchase additional items from. Uh, let's say guild dungeons from from different boss fights that nobody else really wants you can get it for super cheap and you can summon it and lay it on your altar to get additional stats so that's just kind of how that works uh the next thing is this thing called the new tainted set so if we click here uh tier 2 frost whisper i have a full tier 2 set but there's a new item called the uh, tainted frost star domination set or basically that's just what mine is in specific but the way it works is you get the same effect in terms of the tier set, but this gives you now something called a wild stat, which uh, increases your overall damage output. And so what you need to do for this is if you have your full tier two set, you go to the new guild dungeons and once your clan uh, defeats the, the new chapter, so these two different raids, they drop tier sets, but these aren't the normal tier sets. These are, if you click it, the T ancient master. So it's, it's the tainted um, piece now so it's a tainted tier set item and so once you get that you can go to your set piece and you know if you have your tier 2 set already then you can just upgrade it directly once you get the tier piece let's see frost whisper and I just want to go to upgrade so if I were to just get this piece from the guild dungeon I can just go to upgrade and upgrade it to the tainted set instead of the normal set uh, but if you are one of those people who still hasn't gotten a tier 2 set the other option you have is you can go to set and you can go to, let's see here. If you just go down to tainted where it says tainted tier two frost whisper set. If you don't have the, the, the tier two piece already, you can just get the tier two piece from the current guild dungeons that have just been released. And then you can buy the, the adventurous hearts for 30 gold each from the shop instead of having to go back and buy the original tier two piece, merge it with a tainted piece to get the new tainted piece of gear. So I, I hope that makes sense. So if, if you don't have a full tier two set, not to fear, you can always just get the new item from the new dungeons and then buy these adventurous hearts to kind of get the new piece. And I, I don't, I'll, I'll keep, you know, I'll keep updating you guys to see if it's going to be advantageous for you to get the new tainted set. I'm assuming if it's new, it's going to be great. But if it's not, you know, that that's yet to be yet to be seen. Another new thing is the, the rune system. So if you click uh, the four bars and go to runes, they now have a new system where if you were going to go to uh, forge and you're going to forge runes, you have that lucky shamrock. Uh, let's see if I just want to forge a normal rune. You see this now when you forge 12 of them together, let's just go ahead and, and do 12 here. So if I'm, if I just said, you know what, I really want to forge 12 of these together. Let's do the intellect spirit ones, right? So you merge them together and you did it once. So I didn't get a gold rune, but now once I do that 12 times, the very next one will be a guaranteed gold one. So that's just kind of another way to help you in terms of your, uh, if you need to you know, max out your golden set there. Of course, I don't have my golden set maxed out, but that's that. And additionally, there was a new tab opened up called Medal of Glory, which gives you a whole nother set. And if you go to change riddle here, you can see, of course, there's one to 15, but these aren't really different effects. They just give you different stats. So this one says, you know, it gives you intellect, dexterity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This one gives you stamina, strength, dexterity, and all of these, you know, they, you can just kind of look at these and see which one is the best for your class. But one thing to note is if you look in the bottom left hand corner where it says collection attribute to the left of the rune scrolls there and you click that you can get these stats all the way up to 100. So if you get, if you unlock all 15 of these, even if you're not using them, simply by virtue of collecting them, you'll get base increases to your stats. So I think Lego has like plus 100 for each of those, just for having them all unlocked, even if you don't actually have them activated. So that's just another thing to be aware of as well. When it comes to the artifacts, um, there has been a new artifact released. And of course this is probably the coolest looking one. 
All right, let's see. Bricka's Shadow Catastrophe. Uh, you can get it by being, let's see, adored and just buying it from uh, one of the, the friend shops. And then additionally, you get the last two pieces from the level 75 main quest. And then once you reach level 80, you get the last uh, from that main quest there. But if you've been doing your world quests every day, not to worry, The really it's super easy to get your reputation up. If you go down, you should have these items here, the reputation badge, uh, reputation badges rather. Click exchange. And this will take us to the next thing as well. But you can just click uh, teleport world event reputation exchange. So you click that and you can go all the way down to the new faction and just click it to make sure that's Son of the Wild. And, and this is Expeditionary Force. And let me see. Let me just verify which one you actually need. So if I go to the shop, this is going to be helpful for you guys to see too. Reputation. And you click Wild Call, Expeditionary Force. You can look and see where, uh, which one it comes from. So it's not that one. The Void Jade Shade Plague, that's what you need to buy because uh, that's going to be Brekka's, Brekka Catastrophe's first item. So you buy that one. And then there actually should be another one here. Let me take a look. And then you're going to get this one from, Dr from the Draconic. So you should already have this one maxed out. This one's already been released. But you buy this from there. And you buy this from there. And if you don't have it already, again, this is from Gaze of Death. I'm surprised it's not from the new faction. But yeah, if you just if you just go here and you don't have that maxed out already, you can just go to this guy. Again, redeem your uh, reputation badges and just go to the bottom. And this is going to be from Gaze of Death. And you can just click exchange over and over and over. And you get 500 per each of those badges. So you should have no problem maxing it out in no time. And once you do that, you just buy those two. And then you need to complete the main quest so that you can continue getting the rest of those uh, artifact items. The last thing that I want to go over is going to be the, <laughs> the gem system. So I know a lot of you are wondering about this. It's always confusing when they have a new patch drop. But basically, it, here's how it works. So if you click on the four bars here, go to equipment and go to embed. Now this is something you need to do first. This is the order in which I would do this. The first thing is you need to know now for these items, these uh, so this exquisite dome gem could only be, let's, let, me, let me just show this to you here. So this can only be inserted in your legs and your feet. Previously before 3.0, you could only insert one of these per uh per one of those items within that two set so because this says legs and feet you could either insert that into your legs or your feet but now you can in, if you have two of them you can insert one in your legs and one in your feet so the first thing you want to do is go through every item that you have and make sure that if you have any of these additional super powerful gems laying around from the previous patch insert them into the gear that you don't want so for example i had this uh, this gem in there and it gives me more stats but I, I prefer haste instead of dodge so I was going through here and I said you know what I already had one of these molten essences inserted into my shoulders and it would only let you insert one but now it lets me insert one into my helmet as well so I would much prefer to have 41 haste over 51 dodge so you go here and you go through every one of your items and insert those additional exquisite gems or rare gems and just replace everything that you think would give you better stats for your class and then you can move on to the next step. The next step, of course, is to go into your inventory and every item that you've taken out to replace with those better exquisite gems that you've already had, you can go to uh, merge. And as you can see, I've taken three of these level threes out. So you can just go here and merge it together for an exquisite gem. And I was given another molten essence. And of course, I already have two molten essences inserted. So that isn't really going to be helpful. But that's what I would do. I would first insert the additional uh, exquisite gems that you have into each of the each of the pieces of gear that you couldn't previously insert them into and then I would go through and merge the threes that you have together to get more of these to see if you can insert them and after that I would go ahead and just completely dismantle everything so I'll go dismantle it's gonna look painful but I'm just gonna do it uh, you go through and dismantle literally everything to get the gym shards so there we go it's gonna be a lot of uh, inventory space there and I'll just just I'll just I don't need you either okay so once you've done that you go to this delicious gentleman here Bertelsman I think I said that right crystal exchange and of course now there is a new crystal exchange uh, so what you want to do is go down to um, oh, actually yeah gem exchange it's the first one here keep in mind 
just for if you're not aware of this, if you haven't seen this before, these Black Dragon Dark Gems are from 2.0. These are actually from 1.0, those Royal Gems. These Black Dragon Abyss Gems are from 2.0, so these are the relatively new ones. But the main focus is going to be these bottom ones here. So it's these Wild Gem Shards are going to give you the new gems. So what you want to do is just go ahead and exchange as many of these as possible. So look, I, I can do, what is it, 1,333. Confirm and exchange all of them. And now I can buy 23 of these brand new gem shards. So let's do that. And just go ahead and open all of them. So I got a bunch of new wild dark gems. Once that's done, um, let's go back to your equipment here and go to embed. Now before embedding, it's uh, I wanna make you aware of this. So each one of these level three crystals from the previous patch, um, Gives you So look here, you see the, the Twilight Pearl that I have, the level one of the new gem is just a few lower than the level three of the old gem. So you want, so the idea is to get all of your new gems to at least two stars and then replace all of your old ones. So before I do this, um, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my inventory and I'm gonna find the new crystals, wherever the heck they are. Pretty sure they were all at the top. It's been a long day, you guys. Uh, click here, go to merge. And here we go. So I'm gonna merge these together and I'm gonna merge these together. And you just go through and merge all of the brand new ones together to see, uh, to get it as high as you can really. And so I have a few level twos. Here's another level two I can make. And once you make those level twos, you wanna go back to your item set here. Let's see, X out, go to equipment. And now there's a bunch that you can embed. So I'll start with my weapon here. So I'll swap that one for that. And see, so that the level two is higher than the level three. The level two is 43 strength, dex, intellect, and actually gives you strength, dexterity, intellect, and spirit instead of just strength and intellect. And it's 43. So again, the level two is stronger than the level three. And then you can just go through and just click this swap button on all of the ones that you can swap. So I'm just gonna go through and swap, swap, and upgrade this one to tier two. And now if you go back to your inventory, you should have a bunch more of your gems still, you know, the ones that you just had before. These are the old ones that were previously inserted into your gear. You can dismantle those and it's gonna give you more items to give back to, to Bertelsmann. So crystal exchange and you get it, etc., etc. So now I can get 540 of these shards, which gives me of course nine more of these bags. It's really not many, but this is the best way to increase your stats at the base level. And once you're done with that, of course, you want to look at the new crystals, go to merge again, and just merge everything together. So here we go. Two of those. Oh. All right. And now we have a bunch of level twos. And let's see if we can um, socket any more of these. So here we go. We can socket that and that. That was actually pretty helpful. And then it just, you know, it just goes on and on. And so now back to dismantle these two I just got. Go back to exchange, crystal exchange, and then you just continue doing what I've already explained. And we'll just do this one more time because it's right here at the end. So you can get three of these. But one, then two. You go to merge. And that's that's basically the way that you can slowly transition into getting the, the new gems. And that's, you know, that's that's pretty much it in terms of gems. And of course you can socket and the cycle goes on and on and on and you'll get at least a couple hundred CP from that. Other than that, really there are just a few other things that you can click on and kind of explore. So there are of course daily quests that you can do to get certain items. Uh, but if you click growth here, you know, once you do all of these certain daily quests, it gives you certain items and you can use these items to progress and get further and further and unlock all of these things as well. Really, this is just pretty self-explanatory if you're uh, you know, a current player or a returning player, and you can just go through here and, and see everything that you wanna see in terms of the, the new things that you need to do every single day. But other than that, you know, those things are pretty self-explanatory. The new events, there's really nothing uh, that's too, too important to talk about in terms of daily events that you can't really track yourselves. But I hope that uh, these tips have been helpful. This is kind of just the very first things that you need to do as soon as you start playing 3.0. I know it can be confusing, there is a lot and there are a lot of other things to talk about, but just in terms of the first day and getting started, that is everything that you need to do. Just focus on 
getting to level 73, do your first overlord for the day, and then go ahead and start swap, get your divine wings, start swapping out all your gear, do some reforges if you need to, do some uh, rune exchanges if you need to, and that'll get you well on your way and prepared to begin this new journey into 3.0. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in, and until next time, enjoy your day. <laughs>